All right, the first thing we're going to do is add a folder here. And we're going to call it slide. I'm going to right click on slide and go to add mask with color selection. And then we'll hit the pick color button and select red. So what this will do is anything we put in this folder will automatically only be showing up on this uh, section of the mesh that has the red material ID. So let's go ahead and hide over to the materials and I'm going to do a search for metal. This will isolate all of the materials that are metal and the one I'm going to begin with is steel. So I'll just drag steel over. It'll be inside the, uh, the slide folder so it's only showing up here on the slide which is great. Now the next thing I want to do is add a paint layer. So uh, there is a paint in here but I'm actually going to probably just make one from scratch. So I'll, I'll make a fill layer and we'll make it black. And as far as the roughness goes, that's probably okay. We want it to be uh, no height and no normal and, and zeroed out on the metalness or the metallic. Now let's go ahead and add a new folder. And we can call this one Grip. And uh, let's see if there's anything interesting in here for plastic. So there's Plastic Diamond, which might actually work pretty well for this stuff. Uh, before we start adding things to this, though, I want to add another mask with color selection once again. And we will add two colors. So now the Grip will contain both of those bottom areas. Now if I want to see what the mask look, looks like, I can hold Alt and right click on the mask itself and it'll show me what's been highlighted. So you can see here we have a little bit of some edging and that's because of the tolerance that we have on our ID uh, selection. So if I just increase that a little bit, we'll begin to see that go away. So that should be perfect. Let's take a look at the slide. I think that's looking fine too. So I'm going to hit uh, M just to, to go back if you're not automatically there. I can see a little bit of artifacting here from, looks like what, maybe an issue with the high poly. If this was a production asset, I would definitely go back to the high poly, fix that and rebake, but because this is just a demo, it's not a big deal. Uh, so now that we have the grip, let's go ahead and add a plastic in there. You may have to drag your new materials in. So here we can see how that's starting to show up. And for the plastic, again, we'll make it pretty dark and maybe a little bit rougher. So we start to get some material break up there. And I would like there to be a little tiny bit of noise. So I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to call this one noise. Now I don't actually want noise talking to anything other than the bump layer. So I'm going to come over here turn off color, metal, roughness, and normal. I only want it to be in height. Now if I uh, go over to the alphas, I think it's procedurals, and type in noise, I just want something that's like kind of your classic noise. Just little dots, like white noise. That's probably gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna click from here and drag to the height options. Now you can see it gets really, really bumpy. So I'm gonna hop over to height and we're gonna look at the histogram position. So I think if I drag this down, we should, no, nah, that's not really what I'm looking for. We will go to here in the, uh, in, in the layer itself. If we just set this to something very low, like one, we'll start to get that pattern, which is actually kind of perfect. That's maybe a little bit, a little bit too much, but if I go to the UV scale and uh, we'll just go ahead and double it, that's starting to look really nice. So I need to add a, another fill here and I'm gonna call this one grip. So we'll have a little bit of a different pattern here in these areas. And once again, we don't need anything other than normal for our grip stuff. Uh, and we'll go to procedurals. So we want something that's got kind of a little bit of a repeating pattern on it. 
and preferably one with like a kind of a diamond cut. This might work. So let's go ahead and drag this one over. Uh, and in this case, I will need to add a bit, a mask with color selection. So I want it to be isolated to this area here. So we'll go ahead and increase the UV scale probably quite a bit. And again, the, uh, the intensity is a little bit too much. Now we might be able to get in, so here's our, our border width. So this is where we're sort of modifying some of the, uh, uh, the components of this texture. Because it is procedural, we can change some of the stuff around. I need to zoom in a little bit. See what, if anything, we can modify that might make sense. So I was hoping I might be able to get rid of that, uh, the gap there. It feels just a little bit too gappy, but that, that might work for the time being. What we can see here is an issue caused by the UVs. Right now, this, this pattern is being applied via the UV layout, and I guess there's a seam there. So we have this option, which is actually pretty fantastic. Whenever you're dealing with this kind of thing, look for a UV projection, because there's usually going to be an option to do a triplanar projection instead. So what this will do is it'll actually, if the, if the surface is pointing more this direction, then it'll just apply it directly this way. And if it's pointing more this direction, then it'll apply it that way. If there was a, a top-down version, we would see the same thing. So there is a little bit of artifact here because there is actually a pretty significant change in the surface, but it's not as bad uh, as it was when we were doing the UV projection. So here there's like giant issues, whereas with the, uh, the triplanar projection, we're getting a little bit of that stuff, but generally speaking, much nicer. So I'm kind of just running over everything and uh, trying to do kind of a quick pass. I'll hit this stuff in a minute. I want to add a little bit more uh, uh, interesting detail uh, specifically to the slide here. We didn't really do too much with it. I'm going to hop back over to base color. So we have steel and we have the paint. So what I would like to do is kind of scratch away the paint to reveal the steel underneath. So what I'm going to do is add a generator. Sorry, I'm going to add a black mask. You can see when I add a black mask, everything gets transparent. So then when I right click on the mask and click add generator, I get a new option here. I'm going to click on the generator button, scroll down until I see the uh, little wrench with the pencil and select it. That's going to be our mask builder. Uh, and in the next video, we will take a look at what we can do to tweak the settings on the mask builder to get it looking kind of more interesting.